The Build Show today, we're taking a deep and very nerdy dive. Schneider Electric's latest smart panels, their new Pulse panel coming up later this year, and then the Energy Center, which is available now in California. Ryan Euler at IBS last week got a chance to get the full understanding with one of the product managers on this particular product. So that's our first segment on today's Build Show. And then as part of that panel, there's a product that you and I can get anywhere in the US currently. It's called the Wiser Energy Home Power Monitor. Brian put one on his house up in Seattle. I put one on my house down here in Texas. And the two of us on segment two in this video are gonna talk about the product, how it installs, what information we got out of it. I even have a couple of their X series connected switchers and receptacles in my house. So I've got some really good data. We're gonna talk about that. And then lastly, we're gonna come back here to the studio where I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking about uh, the smart panel myself. Today's build show is sponsored by Schneider Electric. Let's get going. If you're a residential builder, you've probably heard of Square D. These guys are part of the whole Square D package. I had a privilege of getting to see this before it was released. Now it's actually released and I can walk you through it. So this is a smart panel. Will knows the technical specs more than me. Let me give you a super high overview and then we'll get into it. So you've got your load center, you've got your electrical meter, and then you've got an inverter, you've got battery backup, and then you've got a car charger. So that's gonna be our framework. Will, what can you tell us about this? Sure, appreciate it. So this is our pulse panel. What's unique about this is it is actually two electrical panels in one. So if you see this division here, you actually have a separate bus up top and a separate bus down here. This is great for a couple reasons. First, in California specifically, when you build a new home, you're actually required to install two separate panels. You're required to install your essential load center for if you're going battery backup, as well as your standard load center. So here we're saying, we'll just give you two panels in one. Up top is where you'll put your loads that you want to back up when you have a partial home backup, which would be like one battery, for example. And then down here, you'll put your bigger loads that you don't necessarily want to back up. We'll also give you the option to put one of our control relays in these as well so that you can control particular loads here at the panel level. Now, you don't want to be controlling everything at the main panel, right? You can do that inside the home with our suite of connected switches and outlets and dimmers and things like that. But larger loads like your heat pump, your sump pump, things like that, that'll make sense to, uh, to control right here at the panel. A couple other things that are great about this is that we know that a lot of people, they want to go solar and they might think, well, maybe I'll get a battery later on down the line, or maybe I'll go whole home backup a little later on, right? And I'll add a second battery. If you were to do that today, you would have to add a sec second load center, put the loads you want to back up for that battery or second battery, rewire the whole thing. It's a day job, it's expensive. With this panel, when you take off this, this dead front, you can reconfigure a couple wires, five minutes, and now both are backed up. So we're future-proofing that availability to go from partial to whole home backup right out of the box. The Wiser app um, is part of the whole digital ecosystem that we're providing, right? And so the Wiser app will give you monitoring, management, and then also that control layer, right? That, the brain that drives that is in here as well. And that gives you the ability to actually monitor down to the device level in your home. Cool. This is the really cool thing, yeah, right? So that, that if you leave you know, that toaster on, right? And then you leave your house, you can get an alert that says, well, something's on. And if that's connected to a connected uh, you know, outlet, right? Then you go ahead and turn that off, right? What's also great about it is that it'll sense when things are out of whack. Like for example, your refrigerator, when it kicks on, right? and then turns off, it's like a heartbeat. So the Wiser app will monitor that. But if that fridge turns on, that condenser stays on, right? Well, something's going on. Yeah. Either the, your kid left the door to the fridge open, right. right? Or the fridge is dying. So, but to know that soon so that you can take corrective action rather than waiting six months, seeing your electric bill go up and then replace your fridge, right? Having that insight's great. my house. 
house. You know, I finished this house about a year ago, and I just added this to my house maybe three weeks ago. But Brian, you've had this going for a while now, right? Yeah, two, three years, something like that. I've been using it's the Sense version, but it's pretty much the same app. Okay, guys, so here's the scoop. Brian and I both have this on our houses, and it's a pretty easy install. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get in this box a clamp that's gonna go on the main feed into your panel box. All right, y'all, we're gonna be installing the Wiser Energy System, which is an app for my phone and this smart controller inside my panel box. We're at my personal house. Sean with uh, Rick Power Electric is gonna get me all set up. And they tell me within something like two to three weeks, it's gonna start to understand what's happening throughout my entire house. Okay, the Wiser Energy Monitor is going in the bottom of the panel box. Sean hit a knockout on the bottom there, and that white little uh, wire you see there is going to be an antenna he's going to hook on so that it'll pick up the Wi-Fi signal from my house. Basically, it's going to get power from this breaker here, and then the rest of the work is for me to hook up the app. And that's pretty straightforward. Those two clamps you're seeing right there are clamped to the main power end, and they're current sensors. And then all the excitement happens in the box with machine learning over time. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. I've been told that it's gonna take really two or three weeks, maybe even four weeks, to really learn all the circuits in my house and what's happening. So I just have one 200 amp service on the outside and my electrician put it in for me because it's gonna tell me how much power is moving through the system and then it's gonna use machine learning to actually kind of categorize that power to the various places in my house. Different than some of the connected panel boxes, and I think uh, Schneider has those as well, which will tell you what each individual circuit does. This is figuring out from your entire house's power what individual circuits are being used and what those circuits probably are. Took my electrician maybe 45 minutes to hook up. He had to drill out through the panel box as well because there's an antenna. And then it took me just a few minutes to get that connected to my Wi-Fi network. Same experience for you, Brian, and all yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've got a sub-panel and a main panel, but it was still able to start figuring out what the different appliances were in our house. That's crazy. So then, I've got an iPhone, uh, you've got an Android going, and like I said, mine's been going for maybe three weeks or so now, and it's already starting to figure out what power is being used where on my house. But what's really interesting about this, or why, why I really wanted to use this to begin with, was I'm looking to add solar to this house at some point uh, in the one to two year time period. And of course I can look at what my uh, power bill says my kilowatt hours are, but having that knowledge in a more granular level allows me to make smart decisions about my house and about what solar might actually get me uh, to a no power, to a zero dollar power bill. Now, how long have you had yours going? Uh, it's about two, three years, somewhere around there. Okay, so you've had this for a little while mm -hmm. now. And what kind of data are you getting off of yours? You know, one thing that's interesting is, like right now, back home, and of course I'm in Texas right now, we're doing about 4,200 watts of power. And you just learn things. Like, if you've got a, a, even LEDs with uh, six cans, seven cans, eight cans, and you turn it on or off, you can see this change. You can see that bump up. Exactly, so it gives you just a little bit more knowledge. You're like, oh, electricity is invisible, but it actually does cost money. Let's, so, do, let's do something live on that, Brian. Sure. Actually, we're, we're in my kitchen here, y'all, and I got a new coffee machine for my 50th birthday, and this thing uses some serious power. So just as a for example, Brian, my house currently, as of this second, we're using 4,800 watts, 30, it's varying, okay? 4,000 watts, let's say, and you can see my machine is on and it's heated, it's ready to go. I was gonna make you a cappuccino in a minute. Let's turn my machine off and look at the app as I turn it off and let's see what it does. Okay, that last test didn't pan out like I thought. I'm pretty sure my washer and dryer was causing the swings and the power usage in the background. But here's a quick clip of me turning on my coffee maker in the morning and watch how it instantly jumps up in the app. Now, what, what kind of data are you getting off of yours, and has it changed your lifestyle or made any decision changes? Yeah, one of the things is we have a couple of cadet heaters, we have an outdoor heat pump, 
and you can just see that they use different levels of, of heating or cooling. So let me define that real quick. A cadet heater is a resistance electric heater, in effect a big hair dryer that you're using for some space heating, right? Mm -hmm. uh, rather than a heat pump, which is moving electricity, uh, or moving heat, I should say, with electricity and doing it more efficiently than a resistance heater. Yeah, exactly. Even though resistance heat is technically 100% efficient, with a heat pump, you get to use the heat from outside and move that either from your house to the outdoors or vice versa. So here's just an example is our basement heat pump. That one they're showing at $93 a year. And then when you go down, this is what I think is really cool, is the power meter. So wow, that's neat. if you're just a nerd, like maybe some of us in this room are, <laughs> you can take a look at I what- I think he means both of us. I think so. But you can take a look at that waveform. Let me see if I can zoom in there. There, I'll hold for you. There we go. I gotta like kind of pull down or you lose that. But they use inverter technology and you can see how that electrical draw changes so zero draw, and then at 5 a.m. it kicked on, and it kind of varied a little bit. And then you can see here at, uh, you know, I don't know, seven after five or so, it kicked off. Kicked back on just for a minute, and then kicked back on at 5.30 in the morning. So you, and, and that's an outdoor unit that's tied to several heads at your house? Yeah, three heads total. And that would look a lot different from other things like the cadet heater, where it would just be on and off. This shows that there's got that variable electrical draw. There's a couple of other interesting things here, if I could show them to you. Uh, you know, th something people are getting more and more interested in is carbon. So where we're at, which is in the Pacific Northwest, you can see what your carbon intensity is. Check that out. So right now, uh, the utilities are drawing 76% from hydro or water dams. 11% from nuclear, they're attributing that as zero pounds per kilowatt hour. But notice the fossil fuel. It's showing 8% of the electricity right now is coming from fossil fuels and they're attributing 1.4 pounds per kilowatt hour. That's pretty crazy. So if there's certain times of day where they're using more carbon intensive fuel, you might choose to not use so much electricity. Um, so it's really thinking more bigger picture than just your own house but how are you really affecting much beyond you? That's pretty wild. I could see at some point too, going to net metering where it's cheaper electricity at midnight, which means that I might have my electric car, let's say it is set to turn on at midnight and charge from midnight to 5 a.m. when electricity is the cheapest, we got plenty of extra capacity. Whereas during the daytime, especially in Texas in the summer, we don't want to charge our cars at three o'clock in July. Right. Because uh, that's when everybody's trying to get their house cooled down at both their office and their house. The other thing that uh, I think would be interesting to know is have you figured out what your annual uh, kilowatt hour usage is? And could that relate to you in any way about what your solar might be if you decided to add that to your house? You know, maybe, but like right now, if I can just show you what our current bill is, it, it's calcing out to $331. That's based off of inputs from us. Okay. So that's not connected to your power company. It's not connected. So you have to, like, our bill is maybe the first X number of watts is nine cents and then the next tier. So it gets a little complicated. I just figured 11 cents a square foot or a kilowatt, cents a kilowatt hour. hour. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. And then you just have to, you can see one thing I've learned is we are definitely a heating dominated climate. <laughs> so even though we use AC in the summer, there's an inverse relationship with the temperature and our electrical usage. Yeah. So you can see. So when the, when the temps get cold, you start using a lot more electricity. Exactly. Whereas in July in the Pacific Northwest, I've lived there before. It was really nice. Yeah. I didn't even have central air when I lived there. Yeah. Five o'clock, six o'clock, it'll get warm and we'll need the AC for a little while, but it's nothing like down here. That's pretty wild. Any last thoughts on the, uh, on the wiser energy monitor? Yeah. There, there's this thing that's pretty cool. It's in the lab section. It has this fault detection, hmm. so no motor stalls observed, power quality, and then no floating neutrals. Oh, that's kind of neat. So the power quality actually had shown up if it was outside of this particular range of voltage. It will uh, be able to tell that. Might not mean that there's anything wrong with the house, but this can help if there is something wrong with the house on your electrical system to not wait until catastrophic failure maybe there's something that'll trigger you earlier than that. That's pretty cool. Another thing I forgot to mention too is they also make connected outlets and I put one of my low voltage rack 
because uh, at this house I've got, like above you, is a Sonos speaker, and I've got a uh, Unify Networks uh, security camera system in the house. And I was curious how much power that rack in particular was getting. So I have one actual outlet that's connected, which right now it's pulled, that outlet is pulling 259 watts, and it's usually always on at 217 watts. So for battery backup purposes, I have two things that I was curious about. Number one, what, how big of an uninterruptible, uninterruptible power supply, UPS, would I need to run that rack alone? Or if I was gonna get a generator, how much would I need either for a larger system or maybe just to get that go, just to keep that going for a couple days? Let's say if, I, if my power went down in the house, I built such an efficient house, I'd be fine with heating, no problem in the winter, but it'd sure be nice to make a phone call or have some Wi-Fi uh, or entertainment on my phone for three days. And now I actually could size my battery to do that. And I actually have a rack mount of battery that I can get eight hours on cool. without even going to my champion generator, which is on the side of my house. Brian, any final thoughts? Uh, just one last thing that I wanna show you that I think is pretty cool. You can, let me move that out of the way. You can just watch that adjusting. You can see what's gone on throughout the day. You can see when your dryer turns on, your dishwasher. That's crazy. So here we are in Texas, but you're looking at your house outside of Seattle at 4,900 watts at this moment in time. And it's equating it to 53 to 54 cents an hour. That's crazy. So it just gives you knowledge. It, it lets yeah. you know what's going on in your house. That's pretty neat. And my understanding is with machine learning, mine will get more and more granular. It's already picked up what my fridge is, um, my low voltage rack, like I said, um, let's see what my devices are. It is my dishwasher, my disposal, my garage or fridge, my heat pump, water heater, my microwave. I think within a, another couple of weeks, it's gonna even pick up more devices in my house and I can get more granular. But as always, the knowledge I think is what's most important about this system. And to get that even more granular in time will be awesome. But what I want is the macro knowledge. How much am I using over time? And this app's really doing it. And frankly, it's a pretty good price point. A few hundred bucks for yep. this. Uh, and then to get your electrician, you know, an hour or two max of their time to put it in, it's no big deal. If you're in California, check this out. This is available for you today. This is the Square D Energy Center Smart Panel. I've never seen anything like this. This is really cool. Meter base built into the panel. The panel you're gonna notice is broken into a top main panel and a sub panel. This is ready for solar input. This is ready for backup battery input, you know, your Tesla power wall. And this is also ready for standard propane uh, or gas generator input, as well as bi-directional charging. So uh, you actually have two stickers kind of built in, by the way, that's kind of cool actually that they provide stickers for your 200 amp circuit board so they look really clean uh, but i thought it was interesting two of the stickers are ev chargers this has bi-directional charging so if you get the brand new ford lightning which can actually when the power goes out then charge your house or not charge your house power your house you can do it with this panel and it's got the wiser energy uh, application built right in here it's kind of minor, but it also, I thought it was kind of cool. There's a plug in here as well. So if you needed to plug something in in the future, it's ready to go inside the panel. A lot of cool stuff going on here. We'll put a link in the description for this because I'm, I'm sure I'm only glossing over the surface. There's a lot more to know about this. This is available in California right now. And even though your homeowner might not have solar or backup battery or any of that stuff, when you include this panel in a new construction build, you're setting them up for the future, you're future-proofing. I assume this will be available nationwide in the short-term future. With that being said, big thanks to Schneider for sponsoring today's video. Links to everything we talked about today. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. You know we've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, I'll see you next time on The Build Show.